Let's check in with Dan Ives. He's Managing Director of Equity Research at Wedbush Securities. Dan, thanks for joining us. Uh, is this bad news not just for Chinese firms, but for foreign firms in general? And, and what do you think will be next in this saga? Yeah, I mean, this is bad news, and ultimately it's in part of the coupling. But I think ultimately investors view this as short-lived, because I believe once a Biden administration comes in, you have a much more ratcheting down of tensions between U.S. and China. And, and this really is, could be a firestorm in terms of the, if this continued. That's why I believe potentially this could be reversed. So you, you suggest it seems to be reversed. We heard there in John Terrett's report uh, concerns on, on Wall Street that Biden may bring along further regulations. Wh which is it? Could it be both? And the streets factoring in despite talk that Biden has a much more ratcheting down of tensions with China. And ultimately, if you if think if you look at this, what I'll call the U.S.-China coal tech war, that's really been the biggest risk for tech stocks, not just in the U.S., but in China. So I believe we will start to see a ratcheting down of tensions, and I think some of these sort of, you know, Trump edicts potentially reverse. And that's something I think investors more and more are looking to factor in in the first 100 days that's going to be key in terms of potentially an olive branch or a softer tone toward China. Dan, can you give us a, a recap of Trump's executive order when it was it, uh, first introduced and how it's been uh, revised since then? And also, what, what do you think was behind the move? Yeah, look, if you uh, look back at the last year and a half, it's been this constant seesaw battle with China. And we've seen it from TikTok across to Huawei and others. And you know, many of the U.S. tech companies are caught in the fray. And, I think there's been a lot of confusion, even what you see in the New York Stock Exchange. There's been seesawing back and forth if they were going to have to delist this or not. And I think what you're going to see right now is that, you know, a, a bit of these edicts potentially start in reverse once Biden comes in. And it was all something that's been overhanged, not just on U.S. tech, but Chinese tech in, in terms of the coupling. And that's something I think going forward that's going to be a much different tone under a Biden administration. And I do believe that's been a tailwind for U.S. tech stocks, semiconductor stocks, Apple, among others, in terms of the street factoring, we'll call it a ratcheting down of tensions between the countries. How important are Chinese firms to American uh, uh, stock exchanges? And, and talk a little bit about the response from China and how you think it might affect these markets? Yeah, I think the whole thing is a bit of a quagmire because even if you look at the Ant Financial uh, black eye that happened in Hong Kong, you know, you, many could argue that you could start to see some Chinese listings in the U.S. Then, of course, you have the New York Stock Exchange situation. I think it throws a lot of this into a bit of uncertainty. I think more and more you're going to see Chinese companies listing in the U.S., dual listings as well as in Hong Kong given what we're seeing in technology across the board, not just on tech, but on EV. We're really going into a golden age of tech and EV, not just in the U.S., but in China as well. And as you've seen by a lot of Chinese, especially EV players like NIO and others, there's a strong appetite for that from a U.S. investor perspective. I want to talk about the future of, of Chinese apps, the ones specifically targeted by Trump, things like TikTok. What are you expecting uh, in the coming weeks, in the coming months, indeed, under a Biden administration? Yeah, TikTok, ultimately, the bark was a lot worse than the bite, because if you look at TikTok, it was a, almost a game of high-stakes poker. And now they're going to stay really a standalone. They'll have some sort of partnership or some ownership with Oracle and Walmart, but they will stay existing within the U.S. And I think TikTok's a good example. That's thriving as a platform. You know, potentially maybe could even go more of the capital markets in the next year or two. And their back was against the wall. And ultimately, I think if you look, they come out, you know, a lot stronger coming out of this and didn't really see any degradation in terms of users either, which, you know, there was some you know, very, uh, you know, I think, tentative days there where that could have gone either way. For TikTok, it looks like it went positive. Uh, there's been discussions, uh, comments from Donald Trump uh, lashing out at, uh, at tech companies 
at big tech. Uh, we, we heard, we saw the uh, report today about Twitter's um, uh, stock valuation, uh, the drop there as a result of its um, confrontation with Donald Trump. Your thoughts on that? And, you know, at the end of the day, lots of people are trying to paint this as a, as a free speech issue at the end in a, in a free market uh, 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 setting. Essentially, is that what we're seeing uh, happen to Twitter, sort of uh, uh, the valuation of it affected in the context of its, its business decisions? We well, yeah, and of course, Twitter's front and center, and the whole thing's a slippery slope in terms of tech, and this continues to be, we'll call it tech versus Beltway battle. But if you look at the Trump situation, you know, the tragic events over the last week, it's, it's really thrown tech right front and center. And, and I think right now investors are trying to figure out what the ramifications are. You've seen Apple as well as others, you know, Amazon, you know, really get involved here in terms of, you know, Parler and some of the other apps and, of course, Twitter. And I think it speaks to what's going to be, you know, a next step and a next chapter in this tech war that we're seeing. But at least so far, I think you see from the reactions outside of Twitter, it's been contained risk in terms of how investors have read this. But, of course, you know, Trump continues to be, you know, one of the biggest attractions on that platform. And, and you've seen the reaction accordingly. Dan Ives from Wedbush Securities, thank you very much. Thank you.